versus I am. And we'll see what gets through. As soon as, uh, we'll see if the players get through to the lobby. First of all. And we may need to remake this one. The uh, counter, counting down. Yeah, there we oh, go. there we go. Okay, rumble. They're in. Hmm. What do you think about that rumble ban against Kuve, though? He hasn't exactly been too spectacular on it. I think that's been one of Kuve's weakest champions yeah. of the season. Teams continue odd. to ban it against Samsung, though, so there's a possibility that he has improved, or perhaps teams feel that there's just a lack of other threats. LeBlanc is banned against Frozen. Again, and there is the Zera, so it looks like the target will mostly be frozen in this game. And that should allow a Leona or a Thresh to slip into Tucson's hands. Let's see what the final ban is going to be against Samsung. Well, Sandra a bit of a head scratcher as well, just because now we only seen a couple of games from Ace. It was on Cassidy and Zerath. And Lulu. Lulu, okay. We'll round out the bands for Incredible Miracles. And so, Vagar will be the last one up against Tucson. All right. So, no Vagar yet again. Oh, well. Proven so dominant in not only team fighting situations, but with Siege compositions, his ability to just take towers effectively for free with his event horizon is such a major threat. Yep. And now Corky picked up as yeah, our first I... pick, one of the most common pick that we've seen first from the blue side here on 5.3. So Rek'Sai is still available too for Eve, and yeah, it looks like they're gonna lock that one in for him. He's been uh, quite good on that, and it seems to be preferring it. Yeah, they, so I don't know, it seems a bit dangerous to give him a Thresh Rek'Sai right off the bat, even to pick up that Corky, what do you think? You well, kinda have to, I guess. I think maybe they thought Eve would go for the Nidalee anyway if he had the choice, just because that has been really his pocket pick. No other junglers in Korea really wanting to take that champion, despite its popularity elsewhere in the world. And the Thresh, that has to be a denial pick against Tucson Thresh, much more versatile than Leona, so Leona will be a bit riskier. But Leona Corky, one of those very strong kill lanes that we've seen with a lot of success. So because of the first pick, Corky, I like this by I am too, just a safe top laner for Lilac, and then Jarvan, always useful for Ares, and it's what he played both of his games on so far, did well on it. So a uh, comfort pick for him. So I am just kind of putting together a, a powerful, safe composition, it seems like. Not only has Maokai been Lilac's, I feel, best champion this season, it's also allowed Kuve to perform better in team fights than he has with other picks. Could see a Hecarim coming in here for him again, that has been powerful hit for him, and he did do a lot of work in terms of split pushing in their last match. Yeah. And Ace could be at home again on that Cassidy, but it's a bit of a blind pick right there, without knowing what's going to be happening. However, they do have that flex pick, and they're probably just gonna take Fury on the Lucian to punish the Corky as much as they can. Now, when I, this may just kind of be trolling right now, but I'm really curious about Frozen changing one of his summoners to teleport. Yeah, I wouldn't bank on that quite yet. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of curious. It Makes is, me wonder a little interesting. bit. Yeah. Interesting, I'm wondering what he's gonna do with that as well. May have a little bit of a unique strategy prepared for Samsung, especially because Samsung does thrive on these skirmishing compositions. If you do have an extra teleport, you can turn those around even if you don't have that same ah, this potential in lane. Back. They're switching it to heal as yeah. it looks like they will be going for mid lane Ezreal. Okay. Strong front line, good mix of damage. Yeah, good solid team, double AD with that uh, Maokai in the top. Yeah, very common team composition that we see these days. Uh, yeah. Something that you can definitely imagine SK Telecom running right now. And looks like that'll be locked in, very safe. Also, we'll probably force the Cassidy up into the top side. You don't want to have him in an Ezreal matchup. Just really makes things quite difficult for you. And 
Uh, Ezreal's just one of those champions that's very safe to blind pick out of the mid lane these days. And, I, you know, I think that's part of the reason why we see this emphasis on Quarky, because that mixed damage, it really opens up the possibilities later down the draft, because you can have him at 80 carry and play pretty much anything in the mid lane around him. Now, what do you think about this Hecarim pickup in this particular case? I feel like I am has a lot of ways to uh, to avoid that ult. Well, they do, but they also want the matchup into Maokai, which is very hard for Maokai because he has to walk up to CS and just gets hit by Rampage every time he does. So, considering that Kuve has been performing on this champion, they may just want to go ahead and give him that advantage. And also, Lilac has displayed weakness. He has been 1v1 multiple times in yep. games and King. killed. And so because you have that Ignite and the Hecarim against the melee champion, they may try and just really push the advantage and try and snowball Kuve. Well, I mean, uh, Hecarim Rek'Sai makes for a pretty scary ganking duo against a, a Maokai or really anything else. So Lilac could get picked on a little bit in this game. Yeah, obviously the disadvantage that you have is that you have to resign yourself to the Kasten and Ezreal matchup in the mid lane. Now, Incredible Miracle, they really should lane swap here because they have two losing lanes. So, I'm wondering if Samsung's going to go for a deep warding strat, whether they want to try and make sure they get the 2v2, where they do have that Lucian versus the Corky and the Hecarim versus the Maokai in the top lane. I think Samsung, it should be some very interesting movement early in this game if Samsung wants to guarantee that they have that edge. You know, Janna kind of looks like she took Corky's mustaches and like just glued him to the side of her head. Maybe that's the real story <laughs> there. It's true. Maybe it is. Could be. So much flowing white hair in this game. Maybe those aren't mustaches for Corky. They're just really long sideburns. We'll find out. Let's get in the game. I am versus Samsung. Will we find out? Noah? We will find out. I promise. It's game time. Go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift IM versus Samsung. Ah, fans are here in force today. And it kind of looks like Corky's mustaches are actually coming out of his nostrils. Must be uncomfortable. How does he breathe? Yeah, he has I, to be his he's mouth, a, I guess. He's a mouth breather. Yeah, apparently. The more you know, see, mystery solved. That was easy. Yep. Okay, so we've got Striker Illusion, but do we have Goalkeeper Maokai? I didn't check on the loading screen. Let's see who scores the goals in this game. Yep. <laughs> Means you have to yell really loud, goal, goal! if uh, Lucian kills oh, Maokai. It is. <laughs> it is, but no Striker Ezreal, so uh, Frozen really dropping the ball there, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. The soccer theme is not complete, and here we go. Yeah, they Looks do like Samsung go for the trying swap. to call the lane swap in this situation after showing a little bit on the bottom side. Now, will this go, or will this be the double bluff, Doa? I don't know. Either way, Janna thinks it's funny. She's just hanging out on the soccer balls. Or soccerlings? Balllings? Whatever you say, Ezreal. And this is the face of disappointment. Oh, yeah? It is, because uh, Samsung isn't really going to get the lanes that they had hoped for right here. And there's the freeze coming in. Ping's going down, so I am, will feel pretty good about what's going on. Maokai already throwing those saplings down, and he's going to be joining up for that double jungle. You're getting a bit of experience right there. About Jarvan with the red buff and <laughs> Ward not going down actually. Wraith just going ahead and checking on the blue buff. Houston just zoning out Kube easily. Oh. Is that a weird elephant again? Yikes. Elephant with a bat. Yeah. Jun Young Jun in the middle there, otherwise known as the uh, hype man. <laughs> Only to foreign fans. Yep. We just know him as Caster Jun here. 
Ace already taking the worst end of a few trades. Teleport used by Lilac. Kuve just cantering into lane. Cantering? Under his own speed. I think it's more of a, it looks like more of a trot, really. A light gallop, perhaps. Maybe he, well, yeah. <laughs> that kind of, that kind of would be a trot. But anyway. I'm glad we agree. <laughs> See, it's kind of like when, when Hecarim runs, he's galloping, but he's just doing it really slowly. Like the leg movement is still sort of a gallop, but he just is sort of, you know, not quite moving at gallop speed. Clearly, Riot needs to get more involved in the equine sciences. Yeah. The horse running animations have a lot to be desired. <laughs> we demand realism That's in our right. video game arcade Hecarim skins. Yep. This centaur simply does not reflect reality. <laughs> First World League problems. My robot centaur doesn't run like a real horse. <laughs> I feel your pain. Frozen. Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> Something about Frozen makes me feel good, I think it was. Wow, Ace really having a lot of trouble. But at least you see us to go Ace. Yeah. He has the extra sustain from the flask. Yep. Yeah, it should be fine. So not too exciting. I mean, you expect Cassidy to get pushed back early on in this matchup anyway. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah it certainly is. It's just a matter of making sure you can survive early on. He's up in CS now, actually. Uh, not too badly. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the Korean casters are talking about, but it's definitely not the game. <laughs> At least something about Ace right there. Yeah. I think they were still talking about that Frozen triple. Whoa. Oh, Fury getting some nice hits on the Lilac. Passive doing some work. We haven't seen too much of an exciting lane swap game in a while. Although the one versus uh, the one in the game one with Janair was pretty good, but yeah, there hasn't been any of those big denials. Teams really starting to figure out how to not get their top laners too far behind, or at least be able to catch up. Or some of the changes to the game helping as well with. Uh, the XP range being buffed means that the die denial isn't quite so brutal as it once was. It used I to miss, be pretty I, easy. I miss brutal denial, Della. Well, you know, things like this, yeah, they make it easier to, uh, you know, I don't know, quote unquote, stay even or come back, but they also do really extend the game length, too. It's also, I felt it removed some pretty core strategy in terms of the lane swap and how complex it was and uh, the potential of denying the enemy top laner really became a big focus in terms of the strategy and I like think I think that it, the change was preemptive because teams were going to find ways to make it not so harsh in the end anyway that the XP range change I think just punished some team wide skill that was occurring at the top level of play and really honestly wasn't affecting solo queue in any meaningful way a dive onto this top lane, maybe Eve coming in. He's going to try to make something happen with Fury. They get the flash out of Lilac. And so that summoner is going to feel pretty good to take away. Ace now starting to take a little bit of damage from Frozen. Ah, Ares is right there as well, too. Coming up, so. they really trying to slow down the Maokai as much as they can because the weaker Maokai is, and if they can get a kill on him, Kuve's Hecarim going for that Trinity Force first is going to be a really a handful for Incredible Miracle. And that's just so important to getting Hecarim rolling. And I'm not the biggest fan of Hecarim top lane just because I feel that he is a little bit too high risk. If you, if you fall behind on him and you have to build full tank, he's basically just a really terrible version of Maokai. And it's only when you can actually get Trinity Force first and start split pushing that he really hits his prime because that damage is so ridiculous onto the back line. So looks good when you win, but looks totally impotent when you lose. And Still is fun to watch either way. It is fun to watch, I will say, from a from a spectator perspective. And I love seeing those Hecarims that are split pushing and when they're ahead. But in terms of professional teams playing him, I'm just not sold on his reliability in some of these games. And I, I think over time, we may see a de-emphasis on that champion as a result. Uh, too difficult to play from behind. But it does snowball well. 
Difficult also to snowball though, because he does have to start a little bit more passively a lot of the times with that flask and then build up also no good CC pre-6. Yep. So hard to gank for as well. I don't know, I'm just, I, I prefer to be more conservative in my League of Legends champion picks and compositions, Don. I see that. It's very... I like versatility. And Hecarim doesn't really offer that to start falling behind, but Kube starting out with a Phage, so we'll be moving into that Trinity Force, and because he is in this situation, he hasn't been denied too much from his farm. Pretty happy to just keep on ramping up in that bottom lane, and Wraith has been made, making sure to help him out there as well. They know the importance of not taking too much of a deficit on this particular champion. Mm -hmm. Well, Fury getting poked by the turret a little bit. And it looks like he will just go ahead and take this red buff. And so far, still, yeah, very passive laning. We saw Tucson kind of putting an emphasis on clearing out some of those tunnels earlier, and that's a, a smart idea. Some of those ganks can come from red side and kind of crazy angles from red side. Oh, Ace goes in for a little bit of damage on a Frozen. Oh, as he goes away, though, the autos, the mystic shots kind of even things up a bit. Yeah, Ace pretty tanky already. Incredible Miracle actually going for a dragon right here. They're going yeah. to get it. Without Very low, any they will. contest whatsoever, even though it just heard the Rek'Sai ult go off. Mm -hmm. Not afraid of no Rek'Sai. Yeah, that's a bit risky, but especially when you have this tier first Ezreal in the mid lane, not a lot of damage to be dealt by Frozen yet, so Kassadin, of course, the higher base damage on his abilities as a mage. Well, Kassadin, or Ace, rather, has done a really good job in this mid lane. Look at that. Ahead in CS now. He's been able to uh, keep up and trade very well Frozen. Yeah, it's a, definitely an impressive start for him. Yeah. Given how hard he was pushed oh. earlier on in this game. Wraith is there waiting in the wings. He does, Lilac will check the side brush. Not gonna find anything though, and Fury's been taking damage on, or dealing damage rather, to this turret pretty effectively so far, keeping that lane pushed up and attempting to knock it down a bit early. Haven't seen the bottom side in a while. But Hecarim looked like he had been moved up for more of this game so far. Can't see the, oh wow, look at that. Already huh. very low sheen on Sonstar. Yeah, it's helping out quite a bit. Get a nice little extra chunk of damage. Really Here we want go. this Maokai. Yeah, this is going to be uh, possibly a pretty good dive, but Lilac already backing out. They're just going to take the turret then. They'll I'll take it. They'll settle for it. Turrets being traded at exactly the same time. Kube still uh -oh. trying to farm right there. Takes a big chunk from that Corky before backing off. See, what we need now in this Corky versus Hecarim thing is we need, like, a snow speeder skin for Corky and then like an ATAT -AT skin for Hecarim. And Corky can just like do circles around him and then <laughs> trip him. That'd be awesome. Don't advocate tripping horses, Doa. That's how you lose great racehorses. No, I'm advocating tripping Imperial ATATs <laughs> before they, uh, you know, destroy your main power generator. We all know what happens then. Darth Vader lands, you have to evacuate. Luke ends up on Dagobah. Ship filled with swamp water, all because. But didn't that work that out in the end? If Luke hadn't had that excuse to go to Dagobah, he never would have become a great Jedi. Whoa! Ace getting really low there. Right. That is, that is true, but. So the long game was actually better, so screw power generators. That's right. <laughs> screw those power generators, <laughs> man. You know, Luke ended up losing his hand at the end of that one, so. In that particular movie, things didn't work out too well. Or anybody really rebel related at that point. It's okay. It's all about that long game, wasn't it? It's true. Gotta gotta think positive, right? Until whatever unfortunate fate befalls them in the new movie. I know, right? Which will hopefully be higher quality than those terrible prequels. I I have uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh huh. You know. I'm just waiting for your joy to be crushed. I hope it's not. George, it, it George. might be. It might be, but I doubt it. <laughs> At least George Lucas isn't there to ruin any more of our favorite fan franchises that he originally created. It's true. George Lucas, the man of great ideas and terrible implementation. Uh, oh, looks like they're going to trade turrets again. Wow, what an action-packed game this has been. It's all about those cross-map objectives. Nobody wants to fight yep. yet. I guess not. 
All right. You know, I was thinking about uh, the the you know Indiana Jones four movie. Still haven't seen it. Unfortunately, well, that's good, but it relates because I feel like you could do like a Indiana Lissandra skin, and when she does Frozen Tomb, she could just put herself in the refrigerator. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Well, everyone who has was is laughing very hard now. I'm sure. Well, at least you're not advocating a Harrison Ford Corky skin. That's t oh wow, <laughs> wow! You are so controversial tonight. I am. It's okay. He's fine. Yeah, that's just. I was worried, man. All right, here we go. Another turret in danger. And when there's a turret in danger, Ace is there. Well, getting poked down to about half health. Oh, this is a good opportunity for Incredible Miracle yeah. to start really pushing with this double AD composition. Yeah, they're, it's about that time, you know. Kuve should be starting to threaten a little bit. Threaten with the flank, perhaps. Yeah. Still waiting on that Trinity Force, though, although he hasn't been hindered too much. There's no K game. Ward, actually, for uh, doing just that. Uh, Ping, actually. From Samsung. No follow up though. Yep, for now, these uh these teams are, it's like watching two pacifist teams, you know, play to like, all right, we we only want to kill the turrets, we don't want to actually fight each other. It's like my favorite game, Bella. I, no kills, only objectives. I don't the dream like your is favorite alive game. right now at fifteen minutes. Not a fan. It's all about poking the enemy off and making sure that they can't contest whatsoever. That is the pinnacle of strategy. Is it really? Yeah, never winning without ever having to fight. Yes, that is that is the pinnacle of strategy right there. Sounds very uh, sounds very martial arts too when you say it like that. <laughs> the true victory is one where you don't have to actually fight. Well, no, the true victory is when you defeat your opponent without having to actually fight. The the you want the victory. I still. think, Monty, the true victory is not even having to fight in the first place. Having everyone get along isn't that. No. The best way to do things? No, because conquest is still important in League of Legends. I see. All right. Well, it's a, it's a friendly competition. See, look at that little, like, what is that? Rocket, dragon head, ward thing? I, That means friendly competition. Is that Fury, the symbol? stop shooting the symbol of friendly competition. <laughs> oh, well. Hecarim, the spirit of friendly competition. Look at that. Hearts, sparkles and things. Friendly. Don't really look at Cassidy. He's not a good example. Well, yep, just kind of more uh, milling about. There's a dragon. It's up. And who's going to try to take it here? I am bullying Samsung out of the way for the moment. They're going to grab the Rift Scuttler, who does not die. And they're just going to start it. OK, so is, is Samsung going to contest this? They're going to try. Here we go, firing Eve coming in. They're going to try it. The dragon nice does go to IM. That's right, the hook helps. Kube getting into the back lines now. Jarvan gets out of his own ult, wraps up Samsung like fish in a barrel now, but IM doesn't really have the uh, shotgun to take advantage of that one. Yeah, really good patience from Tucson on his ultimate right there. Turn that fight around. Kube trying for the teleport engage, but just doesn't have quite enough damage yet. The Trinity Force not finished. Yep. Uh, Kuve got into the back lines, just wasn't able to really make a lot happen there. Uh, Tucson turning the hook around onto Wraith 2. They couldn't quite yep. kill him fast enough. Fury not outputting enough damage. We take a look right. at that one again. So there's the dragon taken. Kuve gets in the back, but just doesn't do anything. And then gets wrapped up by Maokai. That's a great response from Lilac. And Ares, too, flashing out of his own ultimate just to keep everybody bottled up while they turn and dispense of the Hecarim. So really actually well-played team fight off of a nice engage. Yep. From Samsung, and at the end of the day, trade a one for one, but I am with the Dragon. Sure enough, they do get that first non turret objective. Kuve continuing to just shove down this top lane, but he is about 20 CS down. Probably gonna be able to catch up in the near future, though. Oh, that was close. Uh, Ace is actually performing very well. Uh, the thing about Bliss when he was in was he did okay in the laning phase, but just couldn't find a lot of damage or the proper engages. Yeah. Oftentimes resulting in him getting into the back line and then immediately blown up. Fury 
dodges into that true shot barrage a little bit right there. Well, I think Bliss, more than anyone we've seen really from new, the new players, still very much had that solo queue mentality where it's like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go to make my plays, you know? Yeah, or just kind of mindlessly diving into the back line on yeah. phase. Frozen, nice job there. Good dodge, and uh, they get a turret too, so I am starting to build a little bit of a lead between the dragon and the turret. Looks like they're slowly gaining that advantage, but Kuve right now, this is where he really needs to shine. Trinity Force is completed. He has to put down some of that pressure. Lilac ahead in CS and with that assist now, though, he does have a significant amount of armor in order to stop this. Getting close to the Frozen Heart as well, that will be very helpful. Oh, yeah. Well, I am in general pulling ahead a little bit. Lilac CS, also like. with the TP advantage right now, so Kuve can't press it too hard while the rest of the team is farming away from those tier one turrets, or tier two turrets rather, because the collapse could be quite dangerous for him, but we'll see if he wants to push the envelope through some split pushing right now. Tons of wards around IM's mid lane, and that's something that Incredible Miracle has really improved on over the course of the season. They have had just fantastic vision in a lot of their games. Well, it's much, much safer this way too. And even though Frozen is on a champion that he can escape easily with, it's nice to not have to worry about it much at all. All right, so I am going to take that Rift Scuttler again. And moving up to that blue buff, Ace wants to try to stop them. A little bit of damage onto Tucson there. Blue buff started by Samsung. So can they hand it over to Ace? Got a pink ward right there. I don't think I am going to be going in on this one with so much of the jungle. Bit of a mystery oh, right now. Frozen think about it. may try for. Oh, nope, no. Not going to get it. They do force it to go to Eve, however, with the smite. So that's a bit of a win in and of itself. Not yeah. going to hand it to Cassidy. Almost looked like Sunstar uh, grabbed that one, actually. Yeah, really close, close with the rocket. But yeah. Eve landing the chilling smite on it in the end. Trying to clear out this mid wave right now. Should be successful. Samsung really has yet to put hardly any damage down onto the mid. So I am, I, they're just looking really measured, really controlled in this game. We did see a couple objective trades earlier, but I am slowly gaining those advantages. And Kuve unable to really split push right here. It's trying to group up to deal with that blue buff. Doesn't even get it onto the right person in the first place on his team. And now he's forced all the way back to his tier two turret. Yeah, it's a like long it's... way to go before he actually starts applying some pressure. So I'm not sure about this, Kuve. Does it look like he may be successful, or as successful as he was in game one up against GE when he was able to take out a couple turrets in rapid succession. Man. I am playing very defensively, ensuring that he can't be that threat on their tower that they must respond to. I heard Cass and Rift walk, and for some reason it sounded like the Teemo Shroom exploding sound to me, and I had, like, <laughs> I had terrible flashbacks to a solo queue game from a couple nights ago. I'm like, no, no, not the Mushrooms. Did you buy the Banshee's Veil, Doa? I had to, yeah, but in the end, my team succumbed to the Mushroom Forest. <laughs> the Leandrius was too much. Yeah. As soon as you tried to walk into the Baron Pit, everybody was at 50% HP. This Teemo went uh, Rune and Hurricane, too. It was pretty. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> oh, solo queue. I know. I was like, oh wow, that's kind of actually a fun build for Timo. Much more fun for his team, I would imagine. Samsung setting up with. Uh, they already have two of those dragons, though. Or never mind, zero of those dragons. Yep. Two on the other side. And looks like they're not going to be trying to pressure with the Hecarim. And that's one of the things, too, if you don't get those early dragons, uh, Hecarim has to come and get involved in some of these team fights. Kube actually not waiting at base. He's running in. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, he's still got the teleport, I suppose, if he needs to teleport yeah, next but he won't to like have the home feet, guard. But yeah, he won't have the home guards available. A lot a of Hecarim odd, players we see just stand in the fountain in situations like these, waiting for that flank yeah. advantage. And they have a ward down in the river brush that would be perfect yeah. for that too. I agree. They have set up a slow push. Frozen does ult it out though, so there's not a timer any longer on IM. And that's just a great use of the ult. If you're confident you can win the poke wars, which they certainly should be. Mm -hmm. Incredible miracle with the double AD composition. You may not need that true shot barrage and instead just play defensively, poke, poke, poke against Samsung. 
And now the minion wave pressure going in their favor, so they can pretty much wait here forever. Oh, here we go, uh, Eve coming in, and Kube in the back line so doesn't get a huge fear off. Kube already nearly dead. Sonstar firing those rockets in, and I am just going to transition right into this dragon again. Yeah, Kube is just not able to make anything happen at all with that onslaught of shadows, and that's an easy third dragon. Now for Incredible Miracle, things are starting to get a bit serious for Samsung. Well, I am is just reading these engages from Hecarim so well. We saw in the last time that they just wrapped him up and they used the Jarvan ultimate to prevent Samsung from doing very much damage. And Samsung was two grouped together, getting four-man cataclysm and all bottled up. And this time around, Hecarim tries to come in from the side, doesn't use the teleport, doesn't use the home guard and can't, just can't get in quite fast enough with that ultimate and Lilac all over him again. Yep. Yeah, Lilac playing a pretty good Hecarim. Or not, a, a pretty good Maokai against the Hecarim, rather. Yeah, this has been his best champion this season. I'm not too sure surprised. Has. He's been he's been very consistent on it. And I've been impressed by his target selection and team fights in the past. He really understands which threat he needs to twist it advance onto mm -hmm. in order to make the biggest effect over the course of a team fight. Oh, Sansar uses the orb on the wrong brush. Oh, Ace is right He's there. He's got no mana either. Can you win the 1v1? Ah, Sansar, yeah, you're right. Still enough to Valkyrie away. So Ace is just going to let that one go, I guess. Hmm. Pretty close, actually. Yeah, I wonder if he could have chased that down. Well, he was scared. They have no wards in that side ah, of the jungle. Good. No vision at all on Incredible Miracle's side of the map, so taking that risk at this stage may be more than he wants to deal with. Frozen not going for the Trinity Force, instead opting for the Iceborne Gauntlet. Chasing. What am I talking about? This is an NALCS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're going to start getting edgy too. Have I encouraged <laughs> That's you, right. Doa? That's right. You're rubbing off on me now. Too edgy five this broadcast. Three edgy, five, I don't know. I'm not hip like the kids. That's what happens when you're trying to emulate the kids, though. It just ends up in humiliation. Go back and play with my stick and hula hoop. <laughs> your, uh, your piece of metal from the barrel, the barrel hoop. That's, that's right. You're going to go roll down the street, you dirty urchin. That's right. Oh, Tucson gets grabbed. There's a play. There's a box. Tucson pushes people away. Wraith in a bit of trouble here. Gets exhausted. For some Here's reason. The teleport. Oh, that's right. Kube coming in from the side. Tucson in a lot of trouble. Easy kill for Kube there. Lilac, the rest of IM turning around onto this one, but that's let Eves and Fury and Ace come back in again. Zonia's for Ace already. Kube goes down. That's two kills for Frozen so far in this fight, and they're going to keep chasing. Even a lot of trouble. Lilac flashes in for the twisted advance to secure another one and a double kill. Oh, he's still going. Frozen, yeah, he doesn't need to be done quite yet. Uh, oh, tries Arcane Shift in. That wasn't the best idea ever. Uses that summoner heal to he, survive it, but whoops. Seven seconds left on that true shot barrage. Is he going to go for the finisher? One, uh, one second. Do it. No, nope, uh, too late. Too late. Couldn't get that cooldown in time using the uh -huh. A little bit of reduction right there from... So, that was three kills total for Frozen in that fight. Pretty good. Yeah, Tusa gets grabbed, does flash out, and here we go, Sonstar bottling up that choke a little Ooh. bit. Great first kill onto Thresh. Teleport comes in, Tusa gets exploded, but Kube just doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of HP yet with pretty much just that uh, Trinity Force and the Ninja Tabby in the back line. And so Frozen, he's pretty resilient thanks to the Frozen Fist. The Iceborne Gauntlet is able to weather the storm, especially since the Cataclysm was used. And that's a nice team fight from Incredible Miracle, even after Tucson got caught out and nearly killed immediately. Now Frozen managed to acquire both buffs during that fight, too. He got the blue and they just killed it during the fight, and then he picked up the red from uh, one of his player kills later on. Frozen 3-0 and 2 as well. 100% kill contribution, 27 minutes into this game. That yeah, looking pretty good. As usual, Frozen is certainly core to this incredible miracle roster. And when he gets on some of these long range champions, he really is very good. Mm -hmm. So I am the 3K gold lead, but this is gonna be dragon number four coming up in a minute and a half for them. And that is, that is going to be Probably the straw that breaks the camel's back here, unless Samsung can turn up with a really big team fight. 
Yeah, Kuve uh, just set Glacial Shroud for tankiness right now, which is you know quite good against double AD, of course, but he may need a bit more if he wants to really stay in the back lines against a Corky with Trinity Force and Last Whisper and a Ezreal with Iceborne Gauntlet and Muramana and a BF Sword. Like, there's it's just too much damage compared to uh, what Kube has. Yeah, it's that extra armor, too, just makes it so difficult. And Ezreal's kite ability, yeah. especially with Lilac and Ares, who are doing such a good job of just peeling for the Ezreal and the Corky, you really see that they have their heads on straight. They know what a threat this Hecarim is, and they're not even really providing much of a front line in this game. Instead, they're just collapsing on the Hecarim and using as many crowd control abilities on him as they need to in these team fights, and that's working out. They were able to eliminate him quickly, and then Frozen can then turn on and chase everybody down with that Iceborne Gauntlet. I really like the planning here that I am is showing in these team fights. They know exactly how they want them to play out. Yeah, everything for I am tonight has looked very tight so far in this first game, and I feel like that's kind of the the biggest thing we've been starting to see from this team is that they're they're just tightening everything up really well. You know, their execution is crisp. They look decisive. <laughs> the mechanical plays have been good. Yeah, and they have been able to make series against top teams very very competitive. Yeah, that's going to be an easy fourth dragon. I don't think I've ever seen such easy dragons taken. Not in uh, a while, anyway. Samsung doesn't have teleport again for that engage, so what really are they going to do? And this is one of those things where sometimes Hecarim just can't do anything at all. Yeah. And they didn't get the lanes they wanted either. I think this really started to go downhill from minute two when we saw IM with the weaker lanes get the, the lane swap off that they could really benefit from. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Samsung, which I think picked pretty hard into Whoa. winning those lanes, couldn't get the 2v2, couldn't get the 1v1. Tucson with the Zeke's Herald. I actually really like that buy with this yep. comp. It's yeah. a great way to snowball their lead, that's for sure. Not only that, but okay, so Hecarim comes in. Well, that's just extra. That's extra survivability for your carries. Yeah, definitely. So I think that is a, it's a unique buy, but certainly well warranted in this situation. Very cool. Now we just need to see that Zerats portal next, right? <laughs> the Zerats, well, Kube would probably be the best candidate to pick it up here if he really wants to commit to the split push. <laughs> I love we, that item. We've only seen a support build it so far though. And it was troll. It was very troll. <laughs> it was glorious. It was Zeratical. Is that what you say now? It's Zerocked. I like Zerocked better than Zeratical. I think Zeratical. that works a bit better, yeah. That's... I, uh, Radical's still kind of nice. I like that word. Radical. Showing, Only when it's showing your 90s roots there, Doa. Only when it's applied to awesome things, not when it's applied to, like, politics or something <laughs> like that. How about mathematics? Yeah, sure. I'm not a big math fan, but they can be radical. Do you like free radicals as well? Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, you don't. That causes problems. <laughs> in, to bring it all back to Jurassic Park, Ian Malcolm was a pretty radical mathematician. Oh, true shot barrage. Not quite a radical amount of damage to Eve, but well, it's enough. And I, what is Kuve going to do right now? He can't split push against this Malkai. Mm -hmm. Simply too tanky at this stage. So Hecarim. Having one of those useless Hecarim games that... He's been put out to pasture a little bit early this time. You see the life steal right there onto Frozen. Wow. Making Yikes. him so difficult to kill, especially since the only really hard CC they have is a Thresh Hook or a Fear from the, from the Hecarim. Both those pretty short duration. I suppose they have a knockup as well. From, uh, from Rek'Sai, but pretty easy to get away from a lot of these with the highly mobile AD carries. They've got Heal, Flash, and Arcane Shift available Whoa. for Frozen. I am's like, all right, we're just gonna take a Baron and they're taking it very, very fast too. Samsung, And look I at this, they're able know. to lifesteal tank Baron with three members, great call. Yeah, really easy Baron. Really good call, actually, right there. Oh, Ares was behind it, but still, the lifesteal tanking and the extra, I mean, the attack speed too. Just really nice Man. in terms of taking that Baron without much damage. I am has really controlled this game since minute one. Samsung has failed to execute on some of these dives they wanted to get. Yep. 
And there we go. Lilac manages to push that wave all the way forward, get a huge amount of damage down onto that tower. Ooh. Here's TP. This is the last chance. Yeah, Grim coming in. He's got to make something happen now. Frozen a little bit separated from the team. He's in trouble. Gets back over the wall. There's the onslaught of shadows. Frozen just turns immediately, and the kills start coming in for IM. Frozen very low. True shot barrage nicely timed at the end of that zone. Yes. To finish off Ace, a little bit of styling there going on for Frozen. He did die, but... Well, he got hit by Ignite, so he that made it, actually he made managed cool. to take him out at the end. Did do his best to finish the kill, yeah. and that may be the end of this. Yeah, it won't be the end of the game, but it will be the end of this inhibitor. They are going to be able to push this one right up to the Nexus turrets before yeah. backing out. The funny thing is that it's still fairly early in the game. The death timers are low enough that they couldn't finish, even though I think they could have if it was like five minutes later. Well, look at this shield that Frozen has, too, due to his Bloodthirster. So you see him right there, get over the wall, and then there's the Onslaught of Shadows. Nice split, though, so Frozen doesn't end up being feared. Sonstar also with a lot of free autos. And then the Ignite actually finishes him off right there. Lilac just continues to walk forward with the minion wave, take out the tower. That's two towers and the inhibitor. Yeah, why not? I am playing really well. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I, ex I actually expected this, see this series to be a little bit more competitive. But this game, you know, sometimes you see it and it's like a boxing match. And it's just a matter of who hits the other one hardest. But this is more like a chess match. You know, I feel like I am just been moving the pieces in a much more strategic way. Yeah, very true, and I, I think that it's it's very interesting that they did go for the Zeke's Herald in this game, and that they used it in such an effective manner on that Baron. Yeah, very interesting. It's cool, cool adaptation that you don't get to see very often. Well, Thornmail's now done for Maokai. This game is pretty much over at this stage. Kuve, who is supposed to be the split pusher, unable to really deal with the Maokai, and so the slow march continuing. Kube has to stay there and try and fend off these super minions before they march straight into his nexus. We'll be going back right now, try and deal with Maokai, but there's just a huge minion wave at the top side. Good luck with that, Kube. Yep, not much you can do. That is that. And guess what? It's time for Dragon number five. I guess so. They've got the. They got the Baron easily enough. They got all the turrets they want. Why not a fifth dragon to add that? Add on to that. Oh, it's good. Whoa, they did manage to catch Fury with that in the end. And there we go, fifth dragon. And Samsung needs to try something here. They absolutely need to try to stop this. I guess they won't, but. Why that stop it when you can just lose the game, Noah? I suppose. I mean, that's one of those situations where you know you're 90% sure to lose the team fight, but if you don't, then you're definitely 100% <laughs> sure you're going to lose to the push. I, so I, I feel you might the as same well way. I think you might as well fight right yeah. there. Give it one last hurrah. But again, teleport down at that crucial time. Seems like every dragon fight this game, Kume hasn't had the TP available to him, and that really dictates when you can and can't engage effectively as Hecarim. Yep. And now the inhibitor. Keep coming quickly. in and not able to get any knockups on anybody. Kube comes from the side. They try to lock up Ares. Can't do a lot about it, though. Lilac going deep into the back lines, and that gives Frozen plenty of time to do damage. Goodbye, Ace. Another kill for Sonstar, and that's going to be the perfect Ace against Ace and the rest of Samsung. Triple kill at the end of all of it for Frozen as the Nexus turrets go down. And at sub 37 minutes, I am will take an extremely one sided game number one, GG. Yeah, that's, a, that's encouraging from Incredible Miracle that they Very. did look so clean in that game and seemed like they had some pretty solid shot calling. Easily closing that one out as coaches come back into the booth. And really, IM's problems have been mostly in the laning phase as opposed to their shot calling, yeah. I would say, generally speaking. And great performance from them, but Samsung just kind of failing to pick up and do anything. They didn't have.